Good evening and welcome to Forecast from Flagstaff. My name is Chad Eikoff and I serve as Associate Vice President of Enrollment Management here at Northern Arizona University. I'm joined by my colleague. Hi, Chad. My name is Ivana Corella and I am the Assistant Director of Events and Orientation here at NAU. Glad to be here with you. Those of you joining us tonight for the first time are probably first asking yourself, what is Forecast from Flagstaff? Um, and it has its origin back in 2020 um, when we were navigating the pandemic and, and trying to help families and incoming students understand all the changes that were happening that summer. Um, so really this is the, the fourth year that we've done it and we've continued to do it because we realize that this is a benefit for all students, even in a normal year um, and that transition to college. So really um, we do forecast from Flagstaff to help uh, students, family members feel comfortable with that transition to college. Um, I myself, I'm a first generation college student. Uh, neither um, of my parents have college degrees, so navigating that process uh, to a university, we understand can be, can be stressful, can be tricky, um, and we're really here for you to help navigate uh, that process. Uh, one of our traditions with forecasts from Flagstaff is we switch different facilities and locations every single episode. Um, so today is our first day in the kit recital hall that we've done an episode, and Ivana's gonna tell us a little bit about the kit recital hall. Yeah, definitely. So today we are in the kit recital hall, which is a part of our College of Arts and Letters here at NAU. It is also part of our kit school of music. It was opened in 2019 with our donors of Michael and Karen Kit. Um, they have added state of art equipment in specific acoustic design, which hosts many musical performances here in Flag, local artists, national artists, even worldwide artists, but most importantly, our student ensembles are also here. So next time you're on campus, make sure to check it out. So I gotta say, this is a beautiful piano. I don't think either of us are gonna play. Maybe one of our guests later apparently can play the piano, so maybe I'll try to get, get Helen to play the piano for us uh, later. One of our other traditions here at Forecast from Flagstaff is to show just a quick weather forecast. I am not a piano player. You don't wanna see me play the piano. I'm also not a meteorologist, but we do wanna show you what the forecast looks like uh, here in Flagstaff. Those of you watching from Phoenix and elsewhere in the state of Arizona, um, we're starting to get a little toasty. can see that we've got basically perfect weather uh, here in Flagstaff now, uh, right in those low 70s. And actually, we seem to have an early start to our monsoon season, maybe. It's uh, rained uh, a little bit earlier today and might uh, throughout the rest of the week. Um, so to tell you a little bit more about the episode that we've got tonight, uh, we want to make sure that you understand what's coming up in regards to orientation and then also answer questions about advising. And then we know there's some hot issues around housing, dining, all of those types of things. So we're gonna make sure um, to try to answer the questions and themes that came in um, ahead of time. Uh, just this last weekend, we had an exciting weekend. We had commencement uh, here on campus. We had over 5,200 students uh, walk across the stage down at the Sky Dome. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at some of that commencement uh, the commencement festivities, and you're going to have the opportunity to hear a little bit actually from one of our special guest uh, speakers that we had at commencement. So let's take a look. To quote from Semisonic's 1998 hit song, Closing Time, every new beginning comes from some other beginnings end. Congratulations, class of 2023, we did it. Bill Gates, in recognition of your distinguished career, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, including all the privileges, prerogatives, and responsibilities pertaining to that degree. My third piece of advice is to gravitate towards work that solves important problems. New industries and companies are emerging every day that will allow you to make a good living and make a difference. Congratulations on reaching this momentous milestone. Go Lumberjacks. One, two, three. On behalf of the entire university, I extend a warm welcome former students to the alumni family of Northern Arizona University. Congratulations again to all of our graduates. And just in a few short years, uh, many of you watching tonight could be walking across that stage 
um, in the Sky Dome as well. And it certainly was a lot of fun having Bill Gates on campus as one of our commencement speakers um, this year and enjoyed reading um, his blog post where he talked about why he chose to come to NAU and really NAU redefining the value um, of a college degree. So I mentioned earlier we're going to talk about orientation today, and no one better to talk about orientation than Ivana that heads up our orientation efforts here on campus. And the first question I want to ask you is, why would someone come to orientation? What's, what's the benefit in that? Yes, definitely. Great question, Chad. I would say, kind of like Bill Gates said, it's the access to education that we are really valuing here at NAU. And I think that's what orientation really does. It gets you started on the access and the value of a higher education. Um, so a little bit about I, why I think orientation is important is because I also, similar to Chad, am a first generation college student. Both my parents have college degrees from a different country. So navigating the American college education system was completely new. Um, so orientation was really where I learned that I needed to buy books, right? And where to go buy my books. And so I think that's the number one reason of orientation is the resources and understanding how to navigate um, the college experience. We have over 75 campus partners that will be here for our expos on campus that were eager to meet all our new incoming students and share resources on how to be successful here on campus. We will have 50 ambassadors who are current students engaging with our incoming students to kind of teach them where, where are the good spots to study, where's the best place to eat, all places are good to eat is what I always say, uh, where's the best coffee, making sure that students feel a sense of belonging while they're on campus is the number one reason why attending orientation is important. Awesome, absolutely love that. So help learning how to navigate the system um, and then that sense of belonging piece I think is just so key to that orientation experience. So we've got some orientation sessions here in Flagstaff on campus. Uh, can you talk a little bit about those Flagstaff options? Yeah, definitely. So we have eight in-person sessions here in Flagstaff. We will have um, them running May 30th through June 29th. Um, they're all different kinds of dates. So there are some on the weekend, some during the week. We tried to make it access as accessible as possible for different families and guests to make sure to come. One of the things I want to make sure that um, our families know is that we want to encourage any families, guests, any support people that are supporting your student through the college enrollment process attends orientation. We do have a specific student track and a family guest track both orientations are free for both. Um, we have different presentations on campus living, what to pack, uh, career services on how to make sure you're engaging early on in your experience here. We have financial aid. What does work study mean? What does, um, how to pay your bill? All of those important things you will learn and get to talk to people who are getting ready, making sure you're ready for your first day on campus. Great, so that's the, the Flagstaff orientation experience. Are we taking orientation on the road? Are there any other options? Yes, this year, specifically because we care a lot about access and making sure folks can attend orientation no matter what barriers might be in front of them. We are taking orientation on the road. We are gonna be in Phoenix and in Tucson uh, with our similar orientation, similar partner, similar presentation. So the same experience you would get here in Flagstaff, you will get down in Tucson and in Phoenix, kind of in your own backyard. You can register for those um, at nau.edu slash orientation. Awesome, and still lots of availability both here in Flagstaff um, and for those uh, regional options down in Phoenix and Tucson. So again, that, that link that uh, Ivana mentioned, nau.edu slash orientation to be able to sign up. So all of you are joining us virtually right now and online. What options are there in terms of online type experiences, webinars, ways to get information um, online throughout the summer? Yeah, definitely. So we have our uh, re, uh, virtual orientation, which is always online on our website, but we also have these webinars, kind of like the emails that you received about this one and some going on next week. We have these continuing through May and most of the month of July, and they're all about special topics. So we have some from advising that are gonna cover your, what next steps on how to enroll in classes. Maybe some about pre-med if you're interested in that route. We have some about talking to faculty members about how to prepare for your first day on class, maybe how to read a syllabus. Uh, we have some about financial aid. We have a variety of different webinars that you can find on our website, uh, nau.edu slash welcome, but you will also be getting communication to your student email account for all the webinars that we are offering this summer. 
Great, and that nau.edu slash welcome website uh, not only has information about all those webinars, but also has agendas uh, for that Flagstaff experience um, orientation as well too. So uh, definitely check out that nau.edu slash welcome website. So as part of orientation, one of the, the fun things you get to do is meet some of our student ambassadors, and we're gonna give you an opportunity to hear from a few right now um, as they discuss some of their favorite places. So let's take a look. My name is Lexi. Um, my favorite spot on campus is the Coop, because who doesn't love good chicken wing? My name is Julia, and this is my favorite spot on campus, the Health and Learning Center, or as us gym rights like to call it, the HLC. Hi guys, I'm Jackie. I'm a True Blue Ambassador. My favorite place on campus is Seacrest Hall, because I've lived there for three years, and it has all of my favorite memories. Welcome back. Always love hearing from our students. Um, I'm joined now by Helen Hemmer, Director of University Advising, to be able to uh, tell us all we need to know about advising and enrollment, um, which I know is a common question in terms of questions that um, came in ahead of time and uh, just a common question we tend to get uh, this time of year. So thanks for joining us. I'm really glad to be here. Good to see you. So first question I'm going to ask you is, uh, when and how do I get started with my advising and enrollment? That's a great question, thank you. So the first thing I wanna share is all the information I'm gonna talk about advising and enrollment for your first semester. There is a great website that has all the steps, all the links, and that's nau.edu for slash new freshman advising. Um, I would bookmark that and continue to go back to it. Um, I do wanna mention that all of our advising and enrollment can all be done virtually. So as Ivana mentioned, we have virtual options for onboarding, we have in-person options for orientation. Um, there's a lot of flexibility in how you can complete your advising and enrollment. I want to briefly go over the, the three steps. So the first step is submitting a priority enrollment profile. This is done totally online. Let your advisor know what you want to major in, your transfer credit, and that's what's going to prompt your advisor to start working on your schedule for you because we know it can be really overwhelming this first semester. The second step is we've created some advising modules to go over degree requirements, um, advising tools, how to make an appointment with your advisor. Uh, we want you to review all of those as well um, and invite parents and, and members of a student's network to review those as well. The last step is to make an advising appointment. Um, we started advising appointments with first year students April 1st. We have already met with over a thousand of our incoming uh, students and we look forward to meeting with the rest of the folks throughout the rest of the summer. These appointments will continue all the way up until the beginning of uh, the semester and I'll share a little more later about some of those appointment logistics. Great. So you mentioned when you complete priority enrollment, an advisor might start building a schedule for you and enroll you in some courses. How do you know if you have enrollment and you've been enrolled? Yeah, so that priority enrollment is the first step. That's what kicks it all off. Um, a little bit about the timeline. Once you submit priority enrollment, in about two weeks, you may notice one or two classes appearing on your schedule. Um, and then the final schedule probably won't be completed up until a day or two before your advising appointment. As your advisor is reviewing your information, your transfer credit, um, and, and helping to really craft that perfect schedule for you for your first semester. Um, and then in that advising appointment is where you'll get to finalize it and make changes as well. Um, we can talk more about changes. Um, any enrollment changes to your schedule, you'll get an email to your NAU email address. So really important to make sure that you're kind of plugged into that. You can also log into your Louis homepage and go to the Manage Classes tab, and that's where you'll see your uh, schedule. Um, and you'll be able to see as it changes. In those modules I mentioned, there's a whole section on how to read your schedule, how to use it, how to interpret it. It might look really, really different than what, than what you are used to. So here at NAU, we've got about 100 different degree programs that students can choose from as an undergraduate student and lo lots of different majors to choose from, which can be both exciting but also maybe a little overwhelming about choosing a major and uh, am I choosing the right major? Um, can you talk through kind of what, what that looks like if a student wants to change or they're not really quite sure uh, what they want to major in? Yeah, absolutely. That can uh, 
feel like a really pressureful situation, but I wanna reassure you that it is okay to be exploratory. It is okay to be unsure. We are here and we can help you to navigate that. Now is a wonderful time to explore your options. From that website I mentioned at the beginning, um, you can access some student resources on major exploration. There are different inventories and worksheets and just maybe things for you to start thinking about. Um, and then when you come to that advising appointment, please share that with your advisor. Um, we are here to support you in your journey and the more you share, um, the more honest you are about the things you're considering, we can really help you to craft a plan that's, that's gonna work for you. That sounds great and it certainly sounds like advisors are uh, an awesome resource for students, um, helping them navigate um, all of this. Um, and, and with that then, a student might be thinking, I need to schedule an appointment with my advisor. Um, how do they go about scheduling that appointment? That's right. If you remember nothing else, please go to that website and schedule an appointment with your advisor. So all of our appointments are scheduled through our appointment scheduler and you won't use that not just this time, but throughout your entire time at NAU. All of our academic advisors put their availability in there, and you can go in and choose something that works around your schedule. All of our incoming appointments are 30 minutes long. Um, you can do them in person if you would like. We also have Zoom and phone options. We do recommend Zoom if you are virtual, just so we can make that face-to-face -face connection and share resources a little bit more easily with you. Um, Sometimes technology is our friend and sometimes it just doesn't work the way we want it to. So if you're having any issues with the scheduler, I really encourage you to contact our front desk. It's 928-523-4772. Our email is universityadvising at nau.edu. Our amazing student workers are checking that all summer long and we'll get back to you within three business days and can help you to schedule an appointment if you're having any issue. The only other thing I wanted to add is Ivana was talking about the in-person orientation experience, um, which we will be there. We look forward to meeting you all in person. But in order to give you dedicated time, we don't have advising appointments as part of that agenda. So if you are planning to attend orientation, please still also schedule that appointment. Great. So there's always new information that might be coming up that students want to share. Maybe they have transfer credit, maybe they were dual enrolled in high school and they didn't uh, share that within their priority enrollment profile. Um, maybe they want to make a change to their schedule that is out there. Um, how do they go about sharing new information or making those changes? Yeah, that's great. So I would say it first starts with that advising appointment. So your advisor might build you a preliminary schedule, but then maybe you wanna make changes to it. Maybe there's things you're unsure of, or you have dual enrollment that you did while you were in high school that maybe we don't know about when that preliminary schedule is built. So the first thing is bring your questions to that appointment. If you have copies of your AP scores, for example, please have a copy of those on hand so you can share those with your advisor. Um, if you did dual enrollment, make sure you get a copy of the transcript from the community college that gave you that credit. Um, we need to see that rather than the high school transcript. That can sometimes slow things things up. Um, if you get through your appointment, you shared all that, you love your schedule, but a month later you're like, wait, I just heard about this major, I want to try it out, I, I want to take this class with my roommate, that's absolutely great. We have a ton of drop-in options that you can use after that initial advising appointment. All of that information is on that website as well. Great. And just want to put that website link out there again, nau.edu slash new freshman advising. So if you remember any link uh, from this uh, <laughs> section um, and want to go back into remembering those different steps uh, that Helen laid out, um, that's going to be the web address uh, that you check out. So thanks for, so much for joining Thank us, you. Helen. And going to have the opportunity to hear from some more of our ambassadors. So stay tuned. Hi, my name is Abby. Here we are at the university's undergraduate and orientation office here at NU. Just happens to be my favorite place because of the memories we create here and the conversations we have with our prospective students. Hi, my name is Nicholas Ruth. I am a True Blue ambassador. I am going to be a junior studying creative media and film. And my favorite place here in Flagstaff is Lake Man. The reason for that is that it's a beautiful place to check out sunsets, like the one right behind me. And it's just a really cool place to check out, and I would definitely recommend seeing it.
Welcome back. Uh, during this segment, we want to answer some of the, the main questions that came in ahead of time on the survey. Also want to give a shout out to Lexi that's working the YouTube chat right now um, on behalf of the admissions office. Um, so thanks, Lexi, for being in there. Um, a couple big themes that came in ahead of time and we're going to chat through. We're going to talk about um, your housing questions, uh, dining, taking care of the, the food component, so shelter, food. Uh, had some questions coming around parking ahead of time as well. Um, and then just generally next steps. So that's what we're gonna chat through in this uh, segment. And I'm gonna start off with the housing component, which is one of the most uh, common questions that we're getting throughout the summer. Um, I first wanna give a nod to um, the housing rent confirmation payment. It was just due on May 15th, so a couple days ago. Um, if you missed paying that, um, they, you should have just received an email, likely today, maybe yesterday. Um, telling you you need to make that payment by Friday the 19th. So it's $175, and what that does is basically confirms that you are planning to actually use that space um, on campus. And, and that communication you would have gotten would have come to your NAU email address. Um, so just a, a friendly reminder, if you haven't done so already, um, start routinely checking that NAU email address. Maybe set it up to forward to an email address you use more frequently, add it to Outlook on your phone. Wherever you check your email, uh, make sure that you're, you're looking at that NAU email uh, stream as well too, because not just housing, but other offices um, will be communicating to that NAU email address. Room selection, if you have not yet done room selection, that's gonna be on a rolling basis based on your time of housing um, application. Uh, that too will be communicated to you via your NAU email address. So another, another reason to be checking that. In regards to move in, um, that is gonna be, uh, the information for that is gonna be nau.edu slash move in. Um, and with that, um, that, you're gonna see a general calendar of the move in dates um, in the month of August. Um, there's also a lot of great resources there in terms of uh, what to pack or you know what communication you should be having with your roommate to make sure you're planning and uh, not showing up with two microwaves for instance um, in, in your uh, in your room on campus in your campus living situation so uh, lots of good tips there I will say on the move-in component a really common question we have is saying we aren't allowed to pick our move-in appointment yet but we're coming from out of state how are we supposed to book our travel so the key thing with those different move-in dates that you see on the, on the website, nau.edu slash move-in, you will for sure be able to choose an appointment on the date that you want. So go ahead and, and book that travel. Uh, the move-in appointment piece really just staggers people throughout the day. So uh, potentially instead of moving in at 10 a.m., you'll be moving in at 11 a.m. kind of thing. But go ahead, those of you that are making plans to travel to campus, um, know that you will be able to get an appointment um, on the day of your choosing. Uh, typically in early August is when we'll go live with those move-in appointment registrations. So uh, make sure to stay tuned uh, for that. First-year students that maybe you just accepted your offer, just decided you're coming to NAU. Um, I did confirm with our campus living uh, folks today, they are hoping for our first-year freshman students um, that they will be able to keep that housing application open until May 31st. Uh, that being said, if you know you want to live on campus and that's important to you, I uh, would really encourage you to apply for uh, housing on campus um, as soon as possible. And that's going to be um, nau.edu slash campus living is going to be the website that you go to and you'll see information there about living on campus. So that's a lot of information about uh, living on campus, but really common question this time of year. And I will say our next episode that we're doing at the end of July um, is gonna really focus in on that campus living experience. So transition from the, the accommodation, the living, where you're gonna live component, let's talk about food a little bit. Um, and with that, I'll throw it to Ivana to talk about campus dining. Yes, definitely. One of the questions that we often get is, when does my meal plan start? Or what about meal plans? So your meal plan starts the day you move in. So our meal plans this year will start on August 24th. So you don't have to worry about where you're going to eat on your first day uh, because you can eat in one of our many dining facilities. So we have 23 different uh, campus dining facilities plus 
to all you care to eat dining facilities, which are all covered in your meal plan. All first year students are that are living on campus are required to have a meal plan. We have many different options. We have a 19 uh, meal plan option. So that's 19 meals a week. We have a 14 meals a week plan and a 10 meal a week plan. Um, and you can decide which one is best for you. Say you get here and you're like, I'm gonna eat 19 meals a week and you learn in the first two weeks that maybe that's not realistic. You can't spend all day in, a, in an all you carry uh, facility. You gotta go to class every now and then. So you might need to cut it down a little bit to maybe a 14 or a 10 meal plan a week. You can do those changes um, within the first two weeks of the semester. So don't feel that if you're not sure what you to pick, pick one. Um, and then we can figure it out. You can talk with your academic advisor. You can talk with your um, roommate, your other friends on campus and figure out what is gonna be best uh, for you um, going into the next semester or the rest of the semester, excuse me. We also have dining dollars, which are also used as um, cash or your ATM card or debit card that you can pay for if you just want to drink at, at Starbucks. Um, Chad and I are avid coffee drinkers, um, but I often go to Starbucks uh, here on campus and that line is really long and it is usually filled with some sugary drinks uh, that I am jealous of being able uh, to order with all my dining dollars. So I just realized I forgot my favorite question that came in ahead of time. So I'm gonna make sure to get this. This pertained to housing, and this just goes to show that no question is off limits in terms of what you submit ahead of time. The question, which is I'm sure very important to this person, and really anyone, do you need to bring your own toilet paper when you move in to the Depends residence Depends on hall? the brand. Yep, and I, I, yeah, I had not gotten that question in the four years we've been doing this, but very important question. And the answer is, it depends. So if you are in, uh, a residence hall, uh, a traditional residence hall with um, a, a shared bathroom space, toilet paper is provided. If you happen to be um, in an apartment style or suite style, um, you're on the hook for bringing your own. So wanted to make sure to hit that question because if you are tuning in and you submitted that question ahead of time, I know that's an important one to you. So um, yeah, make, make sure you're submitting those questions when we do these different kinds of things. Next section that I want to talk about and those questions that came in ahead of time was parking. And can I bring a car? Should I bring a car? Those types of questions um, are, are really frequent questions to come in. Um, and the website I would direct you to is nau.edu slash parking. Um, if you do bring a car to campus, um, you are gonna have to purchase a parking permit. I, I will say having a car is uh, more of a luxury than a necessity. Um, parents are usually excited when I say that. Students are disappointed that I'm, I'm saying that they don't need to bring a car with them. Um, when you do get a parking uh, permit, it is going to be zone specific. So it's not like you'll be driving from your, uh, where you're living to class and, and, and back and forth kind of thing. Um, it's likely going to sit in the same parking lot except for when you go off campus to different things or um, perhaps drive home to Phoenix or, or wherever you may be from. So um, again, nau.edu slash parking is the spot to get more information um, about that. In terms of just general next steps and, and wanting to make sure I point you in the direction for if, you, if you're saying, hey, what do I need to be doing over the summer? Uh, the website I would direct you to for that is nau.edu slash next steps. And that's gonna be a list of all the different next steps, um, th things like registering for orientation, applying for housing if you didn't do so already, um, completing the FAFSA uh, to, to help out your financial aid. Uh, situation, submitting a JAX card photo um, for your student ID. Um, so all of those things are going to be laid out on that Next Steps website. So uh, would really encourage you uh, to check that out, familiarize yourself with that, um, and, and make sure you're completing those different Next Steps. Now I realize that you may have questions that are really um, specific to yourself, important to yourself, private to yourself. Maybe you don't want to ask it in this uh, setting. Uh, would really encourage you to reach out to our admissions office. Admissions at nau.edu um, is the email address. Um, really ask us anything. We're here for uh, US students, you for family members, support systems um, of those students uh, to really be answering questions uh, throughout the summer. And, and again, no question is off limits. Um, and, and we're really trying to help you feel comfortable with that transition. Uh, we do have a lumberjack um, family chat coming up, I believe a, a week from today actually, uh, next Wednesday. So that's an opportunity, parents maybe, um, and, and guests joining us, maybe you didn't wanna ask the question in this setting, um, but want to when your student's not around, we've got um, a lumberjack uh, family chat 
uh, coming up next Wednesday. And just like this forecast from Flagstaff, really appreciate when folks submit questions ahead of time. Um, so you will be getting a link ahead of time where you can submit some questions uh, for that Lumberjack family chat. Um, so make sure throughout the summer you're checking out all of those different uh, virtual options, webinar options, um, and be connecting with us to answer those questions. Um, once we get through all those webinars, in-person orientation, all of that, we will have one more episode of Forecast from Flagstaff um, to kind of round out our summer series. It's going to be July 26th, so hope to have uh, some of you joining us um, for that. And again, really focusing in on that on-campus living component uh, during that episode. So thanks so much for taking the time tonight. Uh, really appreciate you being here. Um, and until next time, go Lumberjacks. Go Lumberjacks.